without fail, all of them, whenever I talk, talk about how we are going to spend their money, they say, it's okay, I don't want to make. <laughs> And some of those things include being strategic in absence. There are some things that you have to create artificial luck for your children. Uh, financial education in the kitchen. I think that is a conversation that can be understood by a child who's under the age of 10. What does education look like? For, uh, how, how do you put a, a child under the age of 10 in the driver's seat? It's an interesting uh, question. I'm a big believer in teaching children how to earn and to avoid a situation where they become beggars. Mm. Because we have... Because of our background, and most of us have come from difficult backgrounds mm. financially, we have wanted to reward our children mm. with the benefits of our efforts <laughs> and say, I do not want my children to experience the difficulties I went through, mm. the adversities that we went through. So we take our children to the best schools. We take our children, we give our children everything that we can afford to give them even more than we can afford to give, including taking them to schools we cannot afford to take them to. Uh, I experiment, so in my endeavor to teach them how to earn, I said I'm no longer buying gifts in the house. So the way I gift my children and all their friends, if it's your birthday, here is the money. You know, if you're 10 years, I'll give you, it's 10,000 bob. Mm. And I don't put, I don't give it to you. I put it in an account. We have a, a product called Chums. Mm. So they see, okay, I have 10,000 bob. Mm. And uh, other, other services that they may offer, I may reward them and then they keep seeing the money. But what has surprised me is when they say now, dad, I want a bike. Mm. And I say, fantastic. Let's see how much money you have. <laughs> and without fail, all of them, whenever I talk about how we are going to spend their money, they say, it's okay. I don't want to bike. <laughs> so the, the children are much more willing to spend my money, to squander my money. Yes. But they are very careful about what they are their own. Mm -hmm. They want to grow. So that tells me they actually have a sense yeah. and they're starting to learn the, the value of mm. the value of money. Mm. So to come back to your question, what should we teach our children who are up to 10 years? Yeah. I think is the value of money. Absolutely. Is the value of money, including like when you go to supermarkets or whatever, I say, you know what? You have a, you have a 2,000 bob to, to spend mm. and we enter house of leather. Mm. You know, it's like everything is attractive. <laughs> it's a paradise. And I see them struggling. Oh, dad, this is 2,500. Oh, man. They look for something else. So it's, it's, it's just the idea of you can't have everything mm. because I can provide. Mm. Yeah. Value of money, value of money. I have a story about that. We, we had an opportunity to stay with some German friends and uh, they, had a, they had no TV in their house. They had no PlayStation, none of that. They had a big uh, bookshelf full of books and games, uh, but it's board games. And I remember uh, their little boy had just done a Lego set that you could press. It had, it had some electrical circuits and you could press and a bell would ring. And he was so proud of it. And so I remember asking them, how come you don't have a PlayStation or this science? Because they were, very, they were a wealthy family. And they told us in Germany, among the, the educated, you won't find such things. They say, we teach our children to produce. But they say, in the lower working class, those are the ones you will find them.
So he says, we teach our children to produce for others. And I kind of remembered that in Kenya now we are those ones who <laughs> were the others. <laughs> because for us, you're saying, you're right, we teach, we, we, the hard labor and the problems I went through, I want to buy my child a PlayStation, so they never have to go through the stress of not having. So I really believe that, and we, have a, we actually have a, a, a module in Couples and Money called Teaching Your Kids About Money. And some of those things include being strategic in absence. There's some things that you have to create artificial luck for your children so that they can experience. And I think that's what he's saying. There's some things you don't provide for children. Uh, so we started learning to reward our children for chores and to be able to say, these ones, you don't get rewarded. Everybody works, daddy works. So when you clean the table, that one, you don't expect anything. But then we also put the chores which we could pay for because they are chores I would pay someone else to, to do. And so now people are able to bid for those jobs. And even the bidding was based on, are you doing well in school? Have you, you know, are you be well be So now you could bid for that. And once you did, then you got an income. But the interesting thing is when, the ch he's right, when children have an income, they don't squander money. And so teaching your children the value of money, I absolutely think is bang on the money. Absolutely. Yeah. Amazing. So the children under 10, we go with value, right? We'll take a short break and then we'll come back.